Do you know the first step to the eight-step pattern? Uh, for those of you who saw the video on uh, Friday that I did, uh, you can look back and watch the eight-step pattern. But do you know the first step? For those of you who don't know me, my name is Jeff Gamble. I'm actually a traditional business owner, a former network marketer, and currently a John C. Maxwell speaker, trainer, and coach. And today what I want to go over and share with you is, do you know the first step to the eight-step pattern? Um, and that would also be, do you know the eight-step pattern? Which is, define your dream, make some commitments, make your list, learn to contact and invite, present the opportunity and the product, follow through, counsel, which means making a map, we'll go over that on day seven, and then repeat and teach this pattern. What is that? That is actually the pattern of success that the number one networker in the world used to build the largest network in the world and create the most millionaires that have ever existed inside this space, meaning the space of network marketing, MLM, direct sales. That guy's name is Dexter Yeager. You can look him up online. You can watch some of his videos. I will tell you, he's a little out there. Um, but you have to be a little out there to make that kind of money. He actually states it all starts with a dream. And I'm going to give you some background and some reasoning behind this. A lot of times we start out with people or we're told to start out with people. Find people's why. Um, and that's kind of a weird thing. People don't know how to start with a why. You know, why are you doing what you're doing? Well, I don't know. Why do most people go out and get a job? That's a good question. Why do most people get their first job? Do you want to know? Because it's the first fucking thing that's offered to them. That's why. They take usually the first thing, the second thing. A lot of times it's not even in their field. But why do they take it? Because they don't know what they really want. Most people don't know. There was a study actually done um, by a bunch of Harvard um, graduates. And it was actually in a book called uh, What They Don't Teach You in Harvard Business School. And it went on to say that they studied about 1,500 people. And they reviewed that same 1,500 people you know, years later. And basically what it kind of boiled down to is only 3%, 3% of that group actually had their goals written down and knew exactly what they wanted. Now, ironically, that 3% was worth more, was worth more financially than the other 97%. So do the math on that, divide it out by basically 1,500 people. I mean, 3% of 1,000 3% of 1,000 is 30 people. So 30 people would have been worth more than the other 970 people combined. Combined. So is it important to know what you want? Yeah, it's everything. It's everything. Most people don't know what they want. I mean, think about it. Most people, you're like, hey, you hungry? They're like, I don't know. Are you hungry? Like, maybe. Should we go eat? I don't know. Should we go eat? And then what do they do? They don't know. They're always following somebody else. Most people, what do I do? I don't know what to do. What should I do? Same thing. Then, you know, you're like, are you hungry? Well, kind of. Are you hungry? And they're like, well, do you want pizza or salad? I don't know. What do you want? Do you want pizza or salad? Then you go to the restaurant. What are you going to order? I don't know. What are you going to order? Well, I'm going to order the steak. Well, I guess I'll order the steak too. I mean, they can't even fucking make up their mind on what they want to eat. And you're asking them, what do you want to do with the rest of your life? They don't know. Most people don't know. But if you want to know, here's why it's important to figure it out. Because most of the time you can't go get something that's not exact. This is taught in every book about success. It's really taught about every book about success. Jim Rohn says, write a list of goals. Write things you want, things you want to go after. Now, here's why. Let me tell you the psychology behind figuring this out. Um, if your car, if you walk out tomorrow, tomorrow's Tuesday, I don't know what day you're watching this on the video, but tomorrow's Tuesday based on this video. Um, and tomorrow you wake up and you walk outside and all four tires are flat. All four, flat. I mean, not like flat, somebody let the air out of them. I'm talking flat like somebody took a knife and slashed them. They're, they're non-repairable. You can't go fix a flat on these. They're damaged. So what you have to do is actually go out and assess the situation and come back in. Now, most people, they freak out and they call somebody. They don't, they don't really, they'll take pictures of it, they'll post it online. But what ends up happening in the end to fix the problem is, A, you have to know what the problem is. B, then you're going to search for how much does this cost? C, 
where do I go get it from and what is it going to take to get it and fix it? And then you're on your way and on your road. The exact same process is why you need to find a dream and why you need to help people discover their dream. Most people don't know what their dream is. I'll tell you that right off the bat. Um, the number one guy in the industry, Dexter Yeager, what he would do is he would take people out, and there's a great story, he would take people out and show them cars. And they'd be like, well, I'm not interested in Cadillac. And he would say, have you ever driven one? And they would say, no, but I don't think I'd be interested. You know why they don't think they'd be interested? Because somebody in their family told them, oh my God, Cadillacs and Lexuses and Mercedes are so expensive. Because you don't fucking own one. Yeah. That's why. Because you never had the money to actually purchase it, so you make up an excuse of why other people shouldn't like them too. Have you ever done that? Guilty. Guilty as charged. I've done it. Um, but in the end, go out and drive one. When you go out and drive one, it's amazing. You're like, wow, this is so much nicer than the piece of crap I've driven. Wow. All four tires are the same style, company. All my wheels face the same direction. The seat actually moves. The doors actually close. The windows work. I know that's, you know, for some of us, I mean, when I first started in the industry, I had a car, it, like the ceiling had come down and we used push pins to push pin the whole ceiling up. You know, somebody thought it was like art. I'm like, that's not art. That's just like broke. You know, we were broke and we just push pinned the ceiling back together because the heat had basically melted all the glue and then the ceiling kind of dropped down and it would kind of like rub on you. And it was like this brown stuff that would get all over everybody. It was nasty. The seats actually had duct tape. I mean, real duct tape wrapped around them because they were like, it. the sun had, it was a 1970 Pontiac Sunbird. All the tires were completely warm. I mean, th this car was, it had something like, but it, it, the speedometer didn't work and neither did the, 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 the mileage. So we just didn't know how many miles. I mean, it had over 150,000 miles, whatever that meant. Um, and that car probably should have never gone past a hundred. I'm just saying, I'm not, saying it was a terrible car, it got me to where I needed to go. It actually cost me $300. Um, but it wasn't a Mercedes, and it wasn't it wasn't any car. I mean, a nice car. So I went out and drove nice cars, and all of a sudden, the dream started. I was like, wow. Now, here's what's important. Once I drove the car and I really liked it, then I found out what the price was. And once I found out what the price was, now I have a target to go hit. And in the book, Think and Grow Rich, it says, you have to come up with an exact amount of money. Not kind of, not more money. Well, I'd like to make more money. Well, here's a dollar. You just got what you wanted. Is that really what you want? No, but you just got what you asked for. And most of us get exactly what we ask for. Exactly what we ask for. Oh, I wish I wouldn't have that many more problems. So instead of eight, you get seven. You got exactly what you asked for. You got less problems. They might be bigger problems, but you didn't ask for that, did you? See how important it is to ask for the right things. And then after you come up with the exact amount of money, you can visualize actually getting that amount of money, having that amount of money, and then going and actually making a plan to go get it. So with that, guys, the very first step of the eight-step pattern is defining your dream. First, find the dream. Second, second thing is, is know exactly what the price is. Third, now you have a target, an exact target to go after and hit. And now you do everything you can towards that target. Now, the same thing is true in the levels of the business. The first dream may be to promote people. Hey, our first dream is we promote people. We promote people fast. How fast do you want to go? How many people do you need to bring into your business? How much volume do you need? How much product do you need to market to get to your very first level? That's the first dream. And this is goal setting one-on-one. Get to the first goal, get to the second goal, get to the third goal. How fast can you move up this chart? Well, I want to make 10 grand. That's great, but you have to go through $1,000 first to get to 10 grand. So let's get to the first position as fast as possible. How fast can we get to this position? Because that is going to be a better story than the $10,000 story. How fast you got to first position is a much better story because more people can believe they can get to the first position, the second position, the third position. Getting to position 18, there's only a couple handful of people. I'm not saying you can't do it. I'm just saying that shouldn't be your first goal. Your first goal has to be the first level. And with that, guys, what I want you to do is like this video, share it with somebody who needs it, I want to know your thoughts on what you think about finding out people's why and their dream right off the bat. And from there, um, what I'd like you to do is go to my page, work with Jeff Gamble, and like it.
Please, please, please. Have a great day.